Happy 73rd birthday, Dr. J. Julius, Julius Irving. Julius. He is part of our set in our world every day because of you, T.J. Jefferson. You brought that in right behind My you. My favorite right basketball player of all time. Why not? Julius Irving. The doctor. I love Michael Jordan. I love, but like, this guy to me was, uh, he was just it. Well, in terms of famous doctors who aren't really doctors. Well, what are you trying to say? He is. He's number one. Well, he's actually a doctor. Uh, um, well, he's I, I'm sure he's, 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 he's <laughs> technically, you know. Doctorate. Yes, understood. But in that vein, honoring Dr. J, I have a power rankings outside of him in honor of his 73rd birthday. Bet. Famous pop culture doctor power rankings here on the Rich Eisen Show. This is my power rankings. Power rankings. Here we go. Give me a little bit of uh, theme music. I don't know what doctor music is, but we'll do it right here. <laughs> the office is open. Number 10 on my power rankings list is the man, the doctor who once created time travel with a 1981 DeLorean and stolen plutonium. Hey. <laughs> Doc Brown, Dr. Yeah, Emmett Brown, number 10 on this list from Back <laughs> to the Future. By the way, did you see that uh, that that photograph, uh, that uh, that selfie that uh, the actor who played Biff put Tom, out there? Thomas Wilson. Oh, beautiful. Thomas Wilson, it was just great. A, a little reunion with Michael J. Fox and Leah Thompson and, of course, the great uh, Christopher Lloyd who played Dr. Emmett Brown. A great line as well that works uh, to this day. If you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Doc Brown, man, that's number 10 on the list. Number nine on this list is a wrongly accused University of Chicago cardiovascular surgeon who dodged US Marshal Sam Gerard long enough to find the one-armed man who killed his wife, Helen, Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> and the fact that he also exposed his colleague, Dr. Charles Nichols, and his role in a big pharma <laughs> scandal to cover up the negative side effects of Provasic on the liver is the cherry on top. Dr. Richard Kimball, the ah. fugitive. The well, Harrison Ford version. Well done. By the way, did you know the original Dr. Richard Kimball in the television show played by, I believe, the actor David Jansen was a pediatrician? Doesn't work. Oh, that was <laughs> Doesn't good. Doesn't work. That was good. Uh, that was good. There's no, uh, what, RDU 40 or whatever, 90, whatever it was? RDU 90. Yeah. <laughs> Number nine on the list is uh, Dr. Richard Kimball. Doctor, uh, uh, number eight on this list is the irascible, uh, crusty but benign doctor of the USS Enterprise, Dr. Leonard Bones McCoy. Number eight on this list. I know some of you guys might not be Star Trek guys. I am. I grew up watching Star Trek. It's always great whenever, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, Captain Kirk would say to him something along the lines of like, D what do you what do you think of the uh, the atmosphere? And he goes, damn it, Jim, I'm a doctor, not an air guy or anything like that. Just <laughs> fill in the blank. Never. I, I've never heard the word damn it said as much on television oh, before. And then, of course, um, also the first guy I'd ever met or heard of named DeForest. Now, okay. you know, there's Buckner. We know about him for the Colts. Uh, DeForest Kelly played uh, Dr. Right. Leonard Bones McCoy. Uh, number seven on this list, I'm listening, Fraser Crane. Dr. Ah, Crane, nice. um, who go, you know, by the way, uh, I looked it up. Dr. Fraser Crane was the original bar stoolie uh, in Boston who was brought on into Cheers to help Sam Malone get over alcoholism and his breakup with Diane. Oh. Yes. And, uh, and then we all know that he just turned into one of the drinkers at the bar. <laughs> right. And then uh, the the wildest transformation in television uh, for me to go from psychiatrist to talk show radio host the only one that could even top it is benson going from butler to governor back in the day I mean, it's so number that. seven on the list is dr fraser quaid crane number six on this list show. here we go so give me that one more time go you're, you're listening to the rich eisen thank show. you and then of course you know the, <laughs> the great kelsey Grammer giving us that drop number six on this list the rare <laughs> double dip of ladies' man and crime-solving medical examiner Quincy Emmy himself. <laughs> Jack Klugman. Honestly. I don't know who that is. That's Jack, Jack Klugman. Klugman. This is guy. I mean, he goes from Oscar Madison to <laughs> medical yeah, examiner. And by the way, name me another guy who could pull off ladies' man and medical examiner quite like Quincy Emmy. I don't think there is. Dr. One. Quincy Emmy. Number five on this list. 
Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman. <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Quinn <laughs> Medicine Woman. This is the second doctor on this list who went from Boston somewhere else. Fraser Crane went from Boston nice. to Seattle. She went from Boston to Colorado Springs. Nice. And because I love Jane Seymour, she makes this list. I've been to her house. Have you really? I have. That's another one. Speaking of cheers, like, who has not been in my kitchen? Uh, number four on this list, you could say Dr. Frankenstein, but that's not who I'm talking about. That was his grandfather. I'm talking about Frederick Frankenstein, Gene Wilder, and young Frankenstein. Okay? Nobody in the history of medicine could bring back a cadaver from the dead and perform putting on the Ritz. Quite like Frederick Frankenstein. If you're blue and you don't know where to right. go That's to. Igor as well, his assistant. <laughs> Putting on the Ritz. Number three on this list of my power rankings, famous pop culture doctor power rankings. We're finishing up strong. Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce, the chief nice. surgeon of the 4077th Mass Unit, played by Alan Alda, uh, from Crabapple Cove, Maine, Maine, by the way, all the way to Korea. Um, and, and of course, uh, his stance on war was something that I will never forget. Frank Burns, Colonel Burns once told him to grab a sidearm and take uh, a post. And this was his response. I'll carry on, carry over, carry forward, carry Grant, cash and carry, carry me back to old Virginia. I'll even Harry carry if you show me how, but I will not carry a gun. There you go. And also <laughs> from a, a television show. Who's, well, the finale of which was knocked down to 13th on the all-time watched television show list by the recent Super Bowl. Think about it. A sitcom finale still ranks in the top 20 of a United States all-time watched television show list. Number three is Hawkeye Pierce. Number two is the only doctor, I think, on this list that you, you don't know who it is just hearing the name, Dr. Rumack. You know who Dr. Rumack is? Go oh. ahead. Go ahead. It's Leslie Nielsen from Airplane. Oh. I didn't even know that name until I looked it up yesterday. <laughs> you know? I mean, the man is, you know, performing births with forceps and in, in the middle of a plane going down. <laughs> And then, of course, takes the time to make sure that the, the pilots who are trying to land the plane understand what's at stake, but keeping them calm as well. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. That's another famous line as well. Just want to let you know, good luck. We're all counting on you. <laughs> number one on this list is, without a question, number one, and it should be on anybody's list, it is the famed villain of Austin Powers, Dr. Evil. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> number one on my famous pop culture doctor's power rankings, Dr. Evil, all he wanted was sharks with frickin' lasers on their heads. That's all he wanted. That's not a lot. Okay. The number of times that he created all these elaborate stunts rather than just shooting Austin Powers was very entertaining. And then, we, of course, we also know Mini-Me and then the fact that something would be one million dollars. It's just <laughs> number one on the list. And that's my famous pop culture doctor power rankings here on The Rich Eisen Show. That's very, very, good, very good. Thank you. Well done. Oh. All right, we'll get one more. All right, here we go. Oh. I got one more. Oh. I got one more. I could go... Uh, old school movies, Dr. Zhivago. Susie right. gave me Dr. No. That's oh, yeah. a good one. Dr. No, yeah. uh, I could go Supernatural, Dr. Who. Mm. Uh, I could go uh, Superhero World, Dr. Strange. Uh, I could even go The Muppet World. Dr. Teeth. What about Dr. Teeth? Here's Dr. <laughs> Teeth. <laughs> the leader of the Electric Mayhem, famous drummer <laughs> Animal, as we all know. Yeah. I'm not going to go there. No. I'm going to go, again, Fraser Crane on this list could have been the most, I think, a well-established doctor in terms of his resume. I mean, right. uh, Harvard Medical School and Oxford University. So just on that alone, you've got to go with the doctor with the best credentials as my extra one. And it is the man who's got a PhD in poor cell service, Dr. Albert Einstein. There he is, back again. <laughs> Can't quit this man, because you know what? He's not quitting me. I saw him during the NBA All-Star Game, and the man's got a PhD in poor cell service, which I didn't know about. Brilliant. Thank you. Come on. That's the end of my power rankings list. It's my rankings, not yours. They're mine. Was he a real doctor? Yes, doctor. What are you talking about? 
You just made the list. If TJ's saying that Dr. J's a real doctor because he got an honorary degree, this man's got several doctorates. Are you kidding me? Of course, Dr. He's really a real, real doctor. doctor. Get out of here. How dare you? <laughs> just because he leaves his bicycle and needs to be told by Cicely Strong to come collect it doesn't mean he's not a doctor. Kaput. Thank you. I like that list. You left a few off. What did I, I like leave off? Oh. What did I leave off? I mean, you know, there's uh, Dr. House. That's true. He's on there. Uh, shout out to my boy Eric Dane, Dr. McSteamy. Okay. From Grey's Anatomy. I could have done any Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, we yeah, I could have done any ER. Could have gone Doug Ross. Yeah, gone. we have Ross. Dr. Huxtable, Dr. Dre, Doc Rivers. Dr. Uh, we have Dr. Johnny Fever. Nah, Dr. Johnny Fever. I forgot about yeah. him. But, but I mean, it's, it's a, a tough list. list to crack. It's Very tough, good list. Tough list. I like that list. So tough list. Is that it? Yeah, I think it is. I think House is the only one that I'm shocked you left off. Uh, I was sure that you. Who am I going to knock off? Yeah, no one. I'm just saying. Off. I know you don't. You don't well, know I, who Quincy I, is, but I didn't understand. That. Uh, people, I got. I got it. People on the pickleball court know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you and TJ. <laughs> and me. It's good. <laughs> Max Duggan coming up. O'Shea Jackson Jr. too. Still here. Dr. Anybody? Dre was good. You any others? Should have been Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre? Dr. Dre yeah. probably should have made it. Okay. Who am I taking off? That old guy. You said. <laughs> that old guy. <laughs> Quincy. <laughs> well, I mean, Klugman is much better known for Odd Couple, but, you know. To go from Oscar Madison <laughs> and say, I'm going to go serious. And the one thing, too, that Quincy would always say, mm -hmm. that the line was always say, it wasn't an accident. It was murder. <laughs> That's what he would always say. Was there like at some an point, organ hit at some right point, after at some that, point, like, uh, this wasn't an accident. Doc Gooden. It was murder. Dad, that's the other oh, one. Oh, Doc Gooden. It's the See, doc. I stayed out of the sports lane. Yeah, I just went yeah, straight yeah, pop, yeah, culture. pop culture. We could do a whole sport docs. You know? sport it was docs. murder. <laughs> Dr. Spichemin. And then, and then he would go go out on a date smelling of formaldehyde, right? Like, how, how are we some, supposed to buy that? some dime. Look piece. at this guy. Dr. Nick it from the Simpsons. It was murder. And then he went to diagnosis murder after that. No, that was uh, Dick was Van Dyke. It? Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Dick Van Dyke was just on Mass Singer. Well, I'm saying he was on an episode that I just, I'm looking at his eye. It's okay. Well, I'm sure Jack Please. Klugman guessed it. He was on The Love Boat. He was on everything. He's Jack freaking Klugman. Are you kidding me? He was Dr. Jeff Everdeen on diagnosis Nobody murder. Nobody could solve a crime, go out on a date, and declare it was murder. Murder. Quite like Jack Klugman. <laughs> Quincy and me. It wasn't an accident. It was murder. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.